Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers 35. And the word give is found 13 times in 7 verses in this chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, So Israel's camped on the other side of Jordan. Next thing's going to happen for them is Joshua's going to bring them in. And you know about the battle of Jericho. Command the children of Israel. That they give unto the Levites. This is the priest class. Those are in charge of the tabernacle. Levi. Of the inheritance of their possession. Cities to dwell in. Now from verses 1 down to 9. You're not going to see the word land. Levi does not get a portion of the land. They get the tabernacle. They get the service of God. They're going to get cities. And what God's going to lay out right now is he's laying out is in that entire land of Israel that we saw in verse 34. That's the outline. The, the boundary of Israel, the land. Now in 35, that land that you're going to get. Levi does not have a portion. But they're going to have cities. They will have places to dwell in. And God's going to lay this out now. You shall give also to Levite suburbs. For the cities round about them. Because you didn't think suburbs were in the Bible. And the cities shall they have to dwell in. And the suburbs of them. Shall be for their cattle. And for their goods. And for all their bees. So Levites will get out in the country. And they also will get the city. Dwelling in the entire land of Israel. And the suburbs of the cities. Which ye shall give unto the Levites. Shall reach from the wall of the city. Outward a thousand cubits round about. So here's a city. And it's measured out. A particular measurement to give to the Levites. And you shall measure from without the city on the east side 2,000 cubits. Now it says out of this city. And the south side 2,000 cubits. On the west side 2,000 cubits. And on the north side 2,000 cubits. And the city shall be in the midst. And they shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. And among the cities, which ye shall give unto, see, give, 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 give to the Levites, there shall be six cities of refuge, which ye shall appoint for this manslayer, that he may flee there thither, excuse me, and to them ye shall add forty and two cities. And all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty-eight cities. Them shall ye give with their suburbs. So in the entire land of Israel, 48 cities are given just to the Levites among the children of Israel, including Ephraim and Manasseh. And of those 48 cities, six of them, three on this side where Moses is, and three when Joshua goes over, are cities of refuge. And those six cities of refuge is when somebody kills somebody accidentally. 
You had no purpose. You had no hatred in your heart. It just happened. When you're out in the woods, the Bible gives an illustration. You cut a tree down, the tree lands on the guy, kills him. The person that did the killing will go to one of these cities refuge. And it's like a jail. And just, just bring it real brief because, because we'll come upon this again. He will stay in that city. He is to be judged. And he found that, hey, there was no hatred. There was no murder. It's homicide. He will stay in that city to the death of the high priest. So when we look at our law in America and say, well, somebody went to jail because of, of homicide. You know, you're going down the road and your car kills a child. The child ran out in front of the car. This is protection. Now, they don't put them in a jail, a cell. They put them in a city where they can have a house, they can garden and shop and all that. They just cannot come out of the city. And the sole reason for these cities of refuge is the person that the family of the people that he killed will not take avenge on the person that accidentally killed him. You will not have a Hatfield McCormick in the land of Israel. McCoy. That's what they're for. And we'll read a little bit further about these cities. And all the cities which he shall give to Levites shall be 48 cities. That's a question you can ask. How many cities do the Levites get? 48. And shall give with their suburbs. So they get a very vast amount of land, even though they get no inheritance. And the cities which he shall give shall be of a possession of the children of Israel. Judah will give some. Reuben will give some. And so forth and so forth. You'll see that in Joshua. From them that, from them that have many, ye shall give many. And from them that have few, ye shall give few. We've already read that previously. So every time. Every tribe will get a, a Levite. And if a Levite's got a big family, he gets more. If a Levite has little family, he gets less. Simple. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to the inheritance which he inherited. Now, in the paragraph, in the new paragraph. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye have come into, over Jordan unto the land, Okay, Canaan, now we're talking about the land. We're talking about the tribes. Levi gets no inheritance. He will get Jerusalem, but Jerusalem belongs to Judah. Actually, really, Benjamin. Then you shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any persons at unawares. Unwittingly, it's an error. You had no intention. I'm trying to think of the word of the law. I should have wrote it down. but And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger. That's the family that survives. That the manslayer die not. There's no penalty of death to somebody accidental. And in order God says, hey, you killed somebody accidentally. You don't deserve the capital punishment. You don't deserve the death penalty. And God has set that forth as here is a city. And that city, in that city, is to be protected. That man who has been found innocently slain, killing somebody. That he died not in the hands of someone else. Because that avenger would be a murderer. And then the avenger would have to be slain. And we'll see that by the end of this chapter. That the manslayer died not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. So he's got to go to court. He's got to stand in the congregation. It's almost like a kind of jury. He will run to that city and the people at the gate of that city says, what are you doing here? I was out, I was out in the woods and man, we were cutting down trees and as cutting the tree down, we had no idea that there was a widow maker up there. And by me hitting that tree with an axe, that thing came loose. And Simon, I can pick a name from 
from the Bible, Simon was killed. His body's over there. It's in the woods over there. It's, above, it's over there. I didn't mean to do it, man. We were best friends. Okay, come into the city. And they would do all the investigation, all the witnesses, get everything all gathered together, and they would have a trial, like we do in America. And let's, let's call this guy Reuben, give him a Jewish name. And they find out that Reuben did not mean to kill Simon. It was a complete accident. We find the man... He is innocent, but there was a death involved. Reuben will have to stay in that city until the high priest dies. Because Simeon's family might be upset. But Reuben deserves no death. So it's a protection for him. You're driving down the road and your car hit, hits a child. It, it, it happens. It's upsetting. That family may be so angry enough to kill you, but you don't deserve death. So it's protection. It's God's mercy. Verse 13. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for a refuge. Six. Number of man. Isn't that interesting? And there would have been six cities. There would have been three. But since two and a half tribes want to stay on the other side, God had to add three. There'll be three cities on this side of Jordan and three cities on that side of Jordan. Had the two and a half tribes gone over, there would just been maybe just maybe it's two six or three. He shall give three cities on this side of Jordan, the wrong side, and three sides shall you give in the land of Cana. Yeah, I don't know either. Which shall be cities of refuge. So, this is Jordan, and that's the land Canaan. That's the division. That, that river Jordan we saw in chapter 34. Somebody's on the wrong side, but that's not tonight's lesson. Three on this side and three on that side. The six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel and for the Jew, the stranger. The Jew and the stranger, that's where they go. Now, if a Gentile came and accidentally slain a Jew, man, it would be anger. And you got to protect that guy. For the sojourner among them, that everyone that kills any person unawares may flee thither. You have no idea. And if he smite him, with an instrument of iron. So that he die. He is a murderer. The murderer shall be put to death. Oh, okay, now, now we're looking at murder. There is homicide and there is murder. You take a spear and you... The guy, he's dead. Your fault. You take the axe and you put it over his head like they do in Hollywood movies. You're a murderer. You put him to death. Now notice the wording as we go through here. That You cannot say war because it doesn't say a spear. I use it as an illustration. You cannot say it was a sword. It says an instrument of iron. Because there is justifiable killing when there's a war. When you kill somebody in wartime decorated by a country, against a country, it's never murder. Jehovah Witnesses can't get there. And if he smite him with a throwing, throwing a stone, this would probably be also like David, but David was in battle with Goliath. So, if you've got somebody who takes a rock and throws it at somebody, wherewith he may die, and he that he and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Listen, you throw that rock at somebody, you know already that can kill. Don't do it. Don't throw rocks. Or if he smite him with a hand weapon of wood. 
a baseball bat, a stave, broomstick, wherein he may die. Notice it says may die. You smack somebody upside the head with a baseball bat, more chances are that guy is going to die. So you already know in your mind that what you're using is capable of causing death. You cannot use a wooden object on somebody else and, oh yeah, he's going to survive this, I, it's okay. No. And he died. He's a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. What are you doing with a bunch of people in a country called America and probably England? There are housing people who are murderers, been convicted by the court system as being guilty. And they have not yet been put to death, but they're on death row. That's not death. Manson survived all those years on death row and he was not put to death by, the, by this country. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrusts him of hatred, you know what John, the Apostle John writes to us mostly about not hating the brethren? And I believe when John writes that, he looks back at this thing in Numbers and says, if you hated somebody, even if it's an accident, Someone said, well, I know, I know those two guys. What do you guys say about in the court? I so help me. I thought that nothing, true, but the, nothing but the truth, so help me God, Jehovah. So what do you, I know those two guys. Man, he hated them. But man, I was in this, I, I just, it just accidentally happened. But you hated him, right? Well, yeah, I hated him. You're charged with murder. The Bible commands in the law and in the New Testament that you should not hate your neighbors. Hatred is a bound to, and hurl at him by laying of weight that he died. You find that in Proverbs chapter 1. Let's wait for this guy. Let's wait for him to come. And then we're going to kill him. We're going to plan a murder. We're going to plan to kill somebody that's lying in wait there. The, the men put an oath on Paul. We will not eat or drink till we, till we be dead. How long do they live? Paul himself was a murderer. He went with the high priest permission to go to Damascus and there were going to be Christians that would die eventually. Or of enmity, you hate him. Smite him with his hand that he die. Ooh. Karate chop! Hey -ya! Ijinsu! Or that a knife? One of those. Punching, boxing. Those two guys in the boxing ring, do they hate each other by chance? That he died, he that smote him shall surely be put to death. For he's a murderer. So if you get a, by chance, you get a boxing fight, whatever it is, and a guy dies. It's not supposed to happen, but it did. For he's a murderer, the avenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrusts him suddenly without enmity, you hit somebody with a car, thrush. You're you're carrying a you're carrying a pole, a ladder, or something, and you come around the corner and you don't realize somebody else is coming around the corner and you got him right in the gut and that Ends up with a disease and, 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 and just breaks out and ends up in death. Or have cast upon him anything without laying in wait. It's just an act. It's an accidental death. Or with any stone. Wherewith a man may die seeing him not. You're throwing stones just... And you don't realize something comes up behind you, bam, right in the head. And cast it upon him that he died and was not of his en is not his enemy. Neither sought him hard. You you had no reason to do it. 
Then the congregation, there's the jury. You didn't know the jury was in the Bible, did you? Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the avenger of blood according to these judges. You put it before the children of Israel. There it is. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the avenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of, of his refuge. We find that man, though the person died, we find him innocent. You're to go to this city of refuge. Whether he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest. Uh oh, he's not a young high priest. Which was anointed with the holy oil. Now, how do you like that sentence? You don't know how long that sentence is going to be. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whether he was fled. And there's a man that Solomon had trouble with. And he walked out. He went away. And when he came back, Solomon called him up. I forget what his name is. He cursed David. He said, I'm going to kill you because you left. Our agreement was for you to stay in Jerusalem. And what happens is when you put this guy, he's innocent. Someone has died, but there was no hatred. He didn't do it purposely. It's accidental. He goes to one of the cities of refuge, and he get, he goes out. He goes home. He goes over here, whatever reason. And he is found walking without the city of refuge. And the revenger of blood, the family, the person that died, find him without the borders of the city of refuge. And the revenger of blood killed the slayer. He shall not be guilty of blood. Look at that. You killed my son. Bam, bam, and kill. Okay, there's no charge. Now, that avenger of blood had gone inside the city of refuge and done it. Then he'd be murdered. Because he should have remained in the city of his refuge unto the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return unto the land of his possession. goes right back where he was. And you better leave them alone. Whosoever kills any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. Let's get 21. 21. 29. Okay, 29. So these things shall be for a statute law of judgment unto you throughout your generations and all your dwellings. This is the law. This is a law that's semi-followed in the court of America today. I say semi because murderers are found guilty and nothing happens to them. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses, plural. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Now, that's an interesting verse there. We've been talking about murderers. We've been talking about the court system, talking about a jury. But there's something interesting in the Gospels. That the high priests sought false witnesses. They sought liars. And many came. But none could agree. And the Bible says that one witness came up and said, I heard him say, destroy this temple in three days. And I destroy this temple in three days or raise it up again. That one witness. And from that point, they do now have an accusation against Jesus Christ. But they cannot get two witnesses of that guy, what he said. Now, we got to hurry up because we can't be defiled by the law of the Passover. Because we're good law-abiding priests here before God. Amen. And yet, in that trial of Jesus Christ, Numbers 3530 was violated. Oh, you had many witnesses, but the Bible records they were false witnesses. They were liars. And then when you finally brought Pilate, uh, you brought Jesus to Pilate, that, well, what's the charge? He makes himself a god. What about threatening the temple? 
which he wasn't talking about the stone temple. He was talking about his body, the Bible records. So we're coming to the close of Moses' life. We're coming to the close of the book of Numbers and it's been violated by the priest. Look how that's stuck in there. Number 3530 states the fact is that Jesus should never have died. Moreover, he shall take no satisfaction for the life of any murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. Unless you're the Roman Catholic Church or you're the media. Oh, isn't that guy? We can't. That guy, oh, that poor guy. He's got a bad background. Oh, blah, 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 blah. The Bible is against that. Now, you see that word surely be put to death? That surely is the same thing that God told Adam. If you eat that fruit, thou shalt surely die. That word surely was taken out by Eve. So that surely means that you're certainly, it's for sure, it's supposed to be guaranteed by verse 31 that anybody who is charged with murder and found guilty of two or more witnesses, they shall die. America's in trouble. You shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge. That he should come again to dwell in the land unto the death of the high priest. He is totally guilty. He runs into that city. What's going to happen? They're going to have a judgment. They're going to have a trial. He's going to be found guilty. And if he's found guilty, you kill him. You don't care if he's in the city of refuge. If he is guilty, he's got to go and he's got to die. So, closing up, coming to the end. Ye shall not pollute the land. You mean carbon monoxide poisoning? Lead poisoning? Plastic in the seas that all the animals are eating the, the six-pack can holders? You should not pollute the land wherein ye are. For blood, been talking about murder, shedding someone's blood, it defileth the land. Right this above every prison that has, can't think of the word now, death row. Right this above the doors of death row in America. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. You say that's Israel. That's the land of Israel. Really? Was Abel in Israel when God said his blood cries, cries out to me? Was it? No. no. When somebody is slain by murder. God! Tom killed me. Nancy shot me. In the library. With a gun. God says, I hear you. You say, well, Cain didn't die. There was no charge of murder. There was no penalty when Cain and Abel were alive. Now, when Noah got out of the ark, God said, okay, anybody. And God said, even the animal, any animal that kills a man is going to be held accountable. You can write verse 33 of Numbers 35 above any place in prison where there is housing People on death row that has not died, their blood is still crying out to God. And then you're going to sing, God bless America. One nation under God, when in this country there are people's blood crying out to God right now for revenge. You find in the book of Revelation, those that have been beheaded, they're crying out. Their blood has been shed. Defile not, therefore. The land which ye shall, shall inhabit, this is Israel now, wherein I shall dwell, he is talking to the Jews, for I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. And you say, well, you, you, you can't pass that off anywhere but Israel. You're, you're taking it out of contest, not with the blood of, of Abel. 
And then with the blood of Abel, it cried out to God. And Paul said, not in Israel. Well, actually, maybe it was Israel. He says, if I be guilty of death, I refuse not to die. Paul writes to the Romans in chapter 13, if you're guilty of the death penalty, it's the government's responsibility to take that sword and kill you. Peter backs that up. The Bible teaches if you are a guilty charge by a peer, by a congregation, by a judgment, you are guilty of murder. You're to die. And you're not to wait. They, if the person would be found guilty in the Israel, they'd be found guilty of murder, they would take him out, and they would have a pile of stones laid all up or something like that, and they would stone the guy to death. That's a painful death. I don't know about taking a needle and then just go peacefully off. That's not the Bible way. Nowhere there God's He says, take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer. Oh, good night. No, that ain't it. That ain't it. 